Hello students, how are you all? I hope all of you are doing really well. In this class, we are going to study a chapter from your beehive book, The Snake and the Mirror, written by Vaikom Muhammad Basir. Before you read, students, I want all of you to answer a question. Do you like to look at yourself in the mirror? Yes? Some of you will say yes and some will also say no. But most of us really like to look ourselves in the mirror. What do you think about at such times? What do you think when you are looking at the mirror? Today whether I am looking good or not? Is my hair looking nice and uh, it's totally set? Okay? Whether this dress is looking good on me or not? So there are certain thoughts that comes to our mind when we look ourselves in the mirror. Right? Have you ever seen a dog, a cat or a bird looking into a mirror? What do you think it sees? So what do you think when a cat or a dog or a bird look into the mirror? Well, they might think whether I am beautiful or not. They might also think whether my feathers are great or not. Right? So there are certain things the cat or the dog or the bird might have in their minds when they are looking at the mirror. Now, read this humorous story about a doctor, a snake and a mirror. So this story is really a funny one, interesting one, which revolves around three important characters, which is number one, a doctor, a snake and a mirror. Now let's begin this class. Has a snake ever coiled itself round any part of your body? A full-blooded cobra? All of us fell silent. The question came from the homeopath. So the homeopath doctor is asking the question, has a snake ever coiled itself round any part of your body? And not just any snake students, it's a full-blooded cobra. Now this is a really scary question, right? And uh, this is the question which is asked by the doctor of homeopath. And as you can see, I have mentioned the meaning of the word coiled, which means to move or twist into the shape of a coil. As you can see in the picture also, how the snake is sitting in a coiled position. That is, right, that is a position of coiled. Okay, let's continue. The topic came up when we were discussing snakes. We listened attentively as the doctor continued with his tale. So generally what happens when we are discussing about certain thing? A new topic pops up. We start to discuss about different things, right? So here the topic of discussion was snakes. And that's when the uh, question has come and all of these people they are listening very attentively to the doctor as the doctor is continuing his tale or he is telling the story. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock. I had my meal and at the restaurant and returned to my room. I heard a noise from above as I opened the door. The sound was a familiar one. Now the doctor is telling the story, narrating the story that it was a really hot summer night. And what time was it? It was 10 o'clock. He had taken his meal at the restaurant and he returned to his room. And when he returned to his room, he heard a noise which was coming from his room. And that sound was a familiar sound. Familiar means something which you have listened to before. Okay, it was not a new sound. 
it was a known sound it was a familiar sound okay one could say that the rats and i shared the room i took out my box of matches and lighted the kerosene lamp on the table so now the doctor is saying that anybody can say that i and rats shared the room which means the rats were so much in number in his room that almost he said that it felt like sharing the room with the rats then he took out his box of matches and lighted the kerosene lamp i'm sure students all of you must have seen the kerosene lamp right and for reference you can see this picture okay this was very common in earlier days when the electricity was not a facility which was given to all of us now we are blessed with electricity right but previously when there was not uh, you know we we did not have the facility of electricity these kerosene um, lamps were very handy at those at th those days the house was not electrified it was a small rented room i had just set up medical practice and my earnings were meager so the doctor is saying that my house did not have electricity it was not electrified it was a very small rented room because he had just started earning okay he had just started his medical practice because of which his earnings were meager and the word meager means something which lacks in quantity or quality okay so here what was meager the earnings okay the money that he used to earn was very less i had about 60 rupees in my suitcase along with some shirts and dhotis i also possessed one solitary black coat which i was then wearing so he is saying that i had 60 rupees in my suitcase also what other things that he had he had some shirts and dhotis you can see in the picture also students the doctor is wearing a dhoti right he also possessed possessed means he also owned okay a black so i mean black coat which was solitary solitary means a single a single black coat he owned he was which he was then wearing i took off my black coat white shirt and not so white vest and hung them up i opened the two windows in the room it was an outer room with one wall facing the open yard right and this picture is a good reference to what is written here as you can see there is a black coat there is a white shirt and also not so white vest is hung right he opened it and he hung them and he has also opened two windows in the room and he had uh, like the room had only one wall facing the open yard and you can see the picture here is quite dark right like i mentioned before the room did not have the electricity it was dark and he was surviving on that kerosene lamp he it had a tile roof with long supporting gables that rested on the beam over the wall there was no ceiling there was a regular traffic of rats to and from the beam so here the doctor is describing the situation of his room that it had a tile roof with long supporting gables which has rested on the beam over the wall but there was no ceiling and like i told you before the doctor shared his room with rats so there was a regular traffic of rats to and fro the beam and the meaning of gables me here the triangular upper part of a wall i made my bed and pulled it close to the wall i lay down but i could not sleep i got up 
and went out to the veranda for a little air. But the wind god seemed to have taken time off. So he had done all the preparation so that he can go and sleep. He has put the bed close to the wall and he lay down but he was not getting sleep. He was not able to sleep. So what did he do? He got up and he went out to the veranda to get some little air, right? To get some fresh air. But there was no air. And the doctor thought that the wind god has taken leave, has taken time off. So there is no air. I went back into the room and sat down on the chair. I opened the box beneath the table and took out a book, the Materia Medica. So he came back because there was no air in the veranda. So he came back into the room and he sat down on the chair. Then he opened the box which was beneath the table. And from the box, he took out a book. And what was the name of the book that he took out? Yes, very good. Materia Medica. Let's continue. I opened it at the table on which stood the lamp and a large mirror. A small comb lay beside the mirror. One feels tempted to look into a mirror when it is near one. He took out the book, the doctor took out the book and he placed it on the table where also the lamp and a large mirror and the small comb was there. Then he is saying that I feel tempted to look into the mirror because it was near, right? And tempted means to have an urge or inclination to do something, right? So here he was tempted to look into the mirror. I took a look. In those days, I was a great admirer of beauty. And I believed in making myself look handsome. I was unmarried and I was a doctor. So as soon, he was, as, soon as he was tempted to, look, uh, to take a look in the mirror, he said that I was a great admirer of beauty. Right? And he believed in making himself look really handsome. Right? Many of us also want to, you know, we are admirer of beauty. We also want to look good. We also want to look beautiful. Our boys would like to look handsome. And the doctor was unmarried. And he was a, of course, we know, a doctor. I felt I had to make my presence felt. I picked up the comb and ran it through my hair. And adjusted the parting so that it looked straight and neat. Again, I heard that sound from above. So doctor had a very strong feeling that I should make my presence felt. I mean, wherever he goes, people should look at him. People should admire him. Right? So he picked up his comb and he ran it through his hair to make the parting look very straight and neat. And then again he heard a sound from above. Remember, I told you that when he entered his house after coming back from restaurant, he heard a sound, a familiar sound. Here again, he heard the same sound. I took a close look at my face in the mirror. I made an important decision. I would shave daily and grew a thin moustache to look more handsome. I was, after all, a bachelor and a doctor. So he's saying that when I was looking at myself, looking at myself in the mirror, I had made a very important decision. And what was that decision? That important decision? That he would shave daily and he would also grow a very thin moustache in order to look more handsome. Why not? After all, he was a bachelor, right? He was unmarried. He was a doctor, right? I looked into the mirror and smiled. It was an attractive smile. I made 
another earth seeking decision so earth seeking decision means a decision which has a great importance right so he thought that my smile is really attractive and then he made a important decision i would always keep that attractive smile on my face to look more handsome i was after all a bachelor and a doctor too on top of it again came that noise from above so here the doctor is saying that i really have an attractive smile and i should keep that on my face always to look more handsome so you see how you know uh, the doctor really wanted to look handsome and to look handsome he had made two important decisions that day and why not of after all he was a bachelor right he was a doctor on top of it he was thinking all this and then again came that noise which was coming from above i got up paced up and down the room then another lovely thought struck me i would marry i would get married to a woman doctor who had plenty of money and a good medical practice so doctor was sitting on the chair do you remember right so he got up from there and he started to pace up and down the room then another lovely thought struck him and what was that he decided to get married and he decided to get married to a woman doctor who had lots of money and also a good medical practice she had to be fat <laughs> for a valid reason if i made some silly mistake and needed to run away she should not be able to run after me and catch me so now he had another condition to get married and that was he wanted to get married to a girl who has to be fat and why she has to be fat that if sometimes doctor made some silly mistake and if he had to run away she will not be able to run after her after him and catch him so doctor is really funny right you can see that with such thoughts in my mind i resumed my seat in the chair in front of the table there were no more sounds from above so he had these lovely thoughts in his mind and he got back to his chair his seat and he had noticed that there were no more sounds coming from above okay there is a new word for you here resumed which means to begin again or continue after a pause okay suddenly there came a dull thud as if a rubber tube had fallen to the ground surely nothing to worry about so thus he there was no sound right there was the sound stopped to come but what happened there was a dull thud okay the third means a very heavy sound which is made by an object falling to the ground and he has compared that sound to a rubber tube which had fallen to the ground he thinks surely there is nothing to worry about i mean these kind of sounds are very common to him so he did not think much about it even so i thought i would turn around and take a look no sooner had i turned than a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair and landed on my shoulder my god as you can see in the picture how the snake has wriggled over his arm right he just when he had completed his thought that there is nothing to worry about still there was a thinking in his mind that let me turn and see what that sound was okay he wanted to check what what you know, what made the sound so no sooner had he turned he found there was a fat snake which has wriggled over the back of the chair and landed on his shoulder wriggled means students to twist and turn with quick movements okay 
as you can see in this picture it's really scary that how the snake has wriggled itself over the uh, uh, doctor's shoulder so i think we should stop here and the next part of the story we will continue in the next class okay and uh, before ending the class we will discuss some questions the first question is who narrated his encounter with the snake so i'm just asking you some simple questions just to make sure that you have understood the story well and you also get to revise whatever we have read whatever we have read till now okay first question is who narrated the story with the encounter or with the snake yes the narrator of the incident was a homeopathic doctor very good now next question why did the narrator have to light the kerosene lamp on reaching his room so do you remember that the doctor came back from having meal at the restaurant and by the time he came home he entered his room and he had light the kerosene lamp so the question is why did he do so okay the answer is the narrator had to light the kerosene lamp when he returned from having meal at the restaurant it was because it was very dark and the room was not electrified so do you remember students i told you that he lived in a very small room which did not have electricity facilities and that's why he had to make use of kerosene lamp okay let's see the third question why was the narrator awake despite the lateness of the hour the question is very simple that why the narrator did not sleep even though it was late at night let's see the answer i i'm sure all of you know the answer but let's see it it was about 10 o'clock on a hot summer night when the narrator reached his room he made his bed and lay down on it but he could not sleep due to the heat he got up and went out the veranda for a little air but there was no wind so he went back into the room and sat down on the chair so students we all know that the narrator i mean the doctor he went to sleep right he made all preparations so that he can go and sleep but it was so hot in the summer night that he was not getting any sleep he even went out to the veranda to get some air but do you remember i told you that the wind god had taken leaf okay so there was no air so because of which he was not able to get any sleep let's see the next question what are the two important and earth shaking decisions did the doctor take while he was looking into the mirror well this is really an interesting part of the story where he makes two important decisions in fact the earth shaking decisions that he make right you all of you remember the first one was okay let's see the answer the doctor was an eligible bachelor while he was looking into the mirror he took two important and earth shaking decisions he decided that he would shave daily and grow a thin mustache and the second decision was that he would always keep an attractive smile on his face and both of these decisions were taken in order to look ha handsome right he wanted to look more handsome after all he was a bachelor and that to a doctor so that's why these two important decisions were taken by him okay let's see the last question this is a very important question describe the narrator's room okay so i have told you when i was discussing the story that the narrator's room was very small it was a rented room okay so let's see the answer the narrator lived in a small poorly furnished rented room 
infested with rats. It was an outer room, its one wall facing the open yard. The room had two windows and its tiles were supported by gables that rested on the beam over the wall. There was no ceiling. The room was not electrified. Outside the room, there was a veranda. The room was meagerly furnished. Among the few pieces of furniture, there was his bed, a chair, a table with his medical books, usual accessories and a kerosene lamp and a mirror on it. So these basically sums up the description of his room. Okay, you can just note down the important points here and remember it. Okay, we have discussed some questions and I hope all of you have understood the chapter till here. Was it an interesting one? I'm sure all of you really liked it. And the next chapter, we shall continue reading this chapter. We have also learned some new words, students, right? Like gables, wriggled, meager, bachelor. So these are the few words I wish and I really hope all of you will go and explore on these words, find their synonyms, find their antonyms and try to make sentences with them. Okay, I'll see you in the next class. Goodbye and take care.